Good morning. Welcome to the vlog, guys. Today's vlog is gonna be a little combination of workout, running, shopping for running shoes. But first, coffee. Say hello to the vlog. Oh. This, this, this is the man that is gonna greet you if you're ever coming to fitness culture, if you're coming in the morning. He's the glue that holds this together. Man, in the morning. Coffee, shoe shopping. All right, guys, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a awesome protein Pumpkin spice Hi, latte. Love the Starbucks. Two shots of espresso in a uh, a venti cup. Over ice, I'm assuming. Yes, over ice. Because it's fall, y'all. Fall, y'all. Just picking up the espresso, and then we will go add the protein pumpkin to it. So it doesn't have to be pumpkin protein you add to this, but I'm doing it today because I'm just feeling in a fall festive mood. We're about to go add some protein to it. After getting shut down at my favorite grocery store and getting shut down at my favorite gas station, I thought to myself, Steve, you gotta become, you gotta get into the mind of a pumpkin spice basic biatch. Where would you need to go? That left me with one place and one place only. Target didn't even have it. If you guys have been able to find pumpkin protein, let me know where it's at. So now I have to add just chocolate protein, and I don't know if it's gonna be that good. I don't even know this brand. Six grams of fat, six grams of carbs, 32 grams of protein. Takes the chocolate, pours it in with the coffee. Here's how I like to shake it. I did pretty good, I got a little <laughs> bit on me. And that's not bad. So 150 milligrams of caffeine. Let's go find some running shoes. These, these cloud monsters, absolutely killing my heel when I run. So, so I'm gonna try to find some running shoes. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna ten and a half. Yeah, that's a good one. I would for sure put you in much bigger than a ten and a half. So let's just start at eleven and a half and see how they feel. So that one is the endorphin speed. So this one has a nylon plate that gives it a lot of pop, so you could race in it or, or like just speed work or training it. Can try that. One. I Gosh, these look like boats. Looking down, they look twice the size of the endorphin speeds. It looks like I'm wearing a shoe that's like five times bigger. That's crazy. And you just don't have these in my size, you're saying? I mean, I have a 12 and a half, but I don't have to be too big. It's crazy that I'm 11 and a half. That's blowing my mind. Well, we might be back. Okay, so Thank good. you so much. So what I'm finding out with running shoes is I'm really picky. I have a wide foot. I need certain colors and in a wide they make the most basic colors like i love the nike ones the crazy you know marathon setting world record pace nikes but they're so narrow on my feet i feel like i can't do it so we're gonna check out one more place those hokas that i tried on the mock x probably are in the lead but i feel like the Saucony uh, endorphin speed might be a good one too so that i didn't have those in my size at the other place so hopefully this place does so i'm actually missing the 11 and a half these Oh, no. Yeah. Seems Everybody. like every serious runner that I talk to has a pair of these. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a great staple shoe because it does well as a race shoe, it does well as a workout shoe. It doesn't feel terrible running slow if you want to. What's slow? Like your easy run pace. Your um, 10 minute mile pace rather than right, like, like speedy those... seven and a half mile pace? Yes. Hmm. Alright, I might see what other colors are online. Are you going to get one of these runner hats? So just look at my fat head in this thing. Maybe for an extra, extra large head. I'm gonna give me a, I'm gonna get a headband so I'm gonna run. <laughs> you can do that. Thank Zach you Wilson. so much. I have to. Morning, y'all. Morning, morning, morning. 7.06 a.m. Still dark outside, but still gotta go get the running in. So wake up about six, do my morning stretches, take thyroid medication, I have to wait a half hour to eat. Usually just do a banana piece of fruit, coffee, and like a shake. Did my stretching already. I have a little upstairs stretching room. Just go through like a 10 minute, kind of warming up the body, little cat cow. Hip flexor stretch, and then getting into a little bit of mobility with the hips. So, I'm gonna go try to find a, a cool spot to run this morning. Cause I'm tired of just pounding pavement around the house. So maybe um, go through Snow Canyon where the race is actually gonna be held. And then uh, also got to work out today, morning weight. 210 exactly, which kind of where I wanted to be. All right, we're gonna do our training out here today. Beautiful Snow Canyon Park. It is a lot colder out here. I mean, this is gonna be the time that the race is gonna be too, so I gotta get used to this kind of weather. I feel like I need to get my core temperature warm. I am actually running two miles. This will be timed, because I wanna know 
what to expect on this little straightaway. So I'm gonna be getting this, uh, my Garmin ready to go, cardio, and we're gonna start it here in a second and I'm gonna take off. I hate running until I am doing it and then I like it. But for like that first 500 meters, I hate it. Let's do it. Little speed work today, two miles, each under six minutes. That, that downhill helped a lot, but I wanted to get used to it because this is where a large portion of that half marathon is gonna be. And if you don't learn how to run the downhill section, you just beat up your knees. So that's where I'm gonna make up a lot of time. First one I did in 550, second one I did in 555. My knees definitely took the brunt of that. So some recovery will be needed today. I am so freaking sore from running yesterday. I've never actually ran two miles that fast either. So I think that was part of the deal. I was really trying to get after it. So today I'm actually supposed to have a pace run, but instead I'm gonna be doing a little bit of a circuit training. Still build that engine, that cardio capacity, but it'll be basically, we're gonna do some low impact stuff. First things first, we're gonna stretch out. We're gonna hit some light cardio and then we're gonna do some core. So join us downstairs right now. All right guys, so today's cardio, not my typical day, but need to work in some low impact stuff. So we have a thousand meter row, followed up by a mile on the assault bike, followed up by 200 single jumps. We're not doing double unders today. And then we just kind of keep on doing that. We have four rounds. So each time it gets a little bit lower. We decrease by 50 on the jump rope. We decrease by 250 meters on the row and we decreased by 0.2 miles on the assault bike. Four rounds, do it for time. One more round. Actually, I felt better as this workout's going on. It's like all the lactic acid. Pulling and quads, even some hamstrings on that rower. And then obviously push pull with legs. And then really just trying to be smooth with the jump rope. It's gonna hit some shoulders and then also blow up the calves. So very low impact for me. Last round. So each round has gotten less in distance, but a little bit more intense. 49 seconds on that. Oh. Oh, that hurt. Twenty-six minutes. A different kind of cardio. And just getting out there and pounding pavement, but yeah, it's probably equivalent. About three miles when we start talking about cardio work. Trying to be a little bit nicer to the lower body. I was moving. I was moving on that downhill. And I definitely felt it this morning. I got five minutes and then I'm gonna do my core circuit. And while we're waiting, we're gonna talk a little bit about spot reducing. There's this idea that we can train away fat in certain areas. We've all seen Instagram trainers. People talk about, oh, do this to burn belly fat. What? We should all know that's a myth. Nothing we can do can target one area specific to lose body fat in that area. Here's another thing you might not love hearing. Where we store body fat is largely due to genetics. Men, for example, tend to hold more weight midsection. Women, on average, hold more fat glutes and a little bit more into arms. But this idea of like, oh, what's your goal right now? Uh, I don't wanna get too big. I just wanna get toned. To me, when I hear toned, it's one of two things. Toned is either you're decreasing overall body fat to where you can see definition in those areas, or we're gonna keep that same body fat and we're gonna build muscle. I can actually build these muscles in my core by doing things like crunches, side planks, planks, which then could help you see definition and thereby being toned. But this idea that we can spot reduce, let's stop doing that in the fitness industry. Let's stop, stop even click baiting it. It's toxic. We don't wanna do that. That's my rant. I'm gonna jump into my ab training now. 
one of the things I've been trying to do in life is to slow down when it's time to slow down. Making sure I have my morning time, which is just gym time. I then come in and have my work time. I can really fuel systems then. I don't have to worry about motivation. I don't have to worry about anything other than, hey, I follow a schedule, I do things, I don't even have to think about it. They're part of a bigger picture, they're part of where I want to become, they're a part of who I identify with as a human being. And I think for so long, being out of good habits has gotten me into this place where I'm now facilitating these things like working out first thing in the morning, like creating consistent content. The landscape of social media has changed dramatically since I've been excited about creating content going back like three or four years. It's easy to create content when you're doing a show, but I think what we're just gonna be doing on this channel is almost documenting things that I'm passionate about. And right now what I'm really passionate about is being a utility athlete, doing training that is gonna make me more athletic, functional, yet strong and aesthetic to a certain point as well. And I'm gonna be honest, right now my nutrition needs to get better. Working on the cardiovascular component each and every single day. If you've ever been an experienced athlete, you're capable of great things. You know mentally you can do it, but sometimes your body is, is still getting used to getting back to where it was. So that run earlier this week wrecked me, but it's just gonna be little by little, getting better each and every single day. If you don't have a daily schedule, if you don't have, you know, even meal ideas and prepped food, all of a sudden, all of these little choices that we go through our day having to make, where I'm gonna eat, what I'm gonna wear, what am I training today, what time am I training today, all of these things build up and it leaves you mentally exhausted and physically exhausted to the point where you're not performing like you should be. <sighs> Next vlog will be all about getting married, but this is super exciting stuff happening. I feel like I'm getting kind of that passion back. It's easier to stay in shape than to get in shape. It's easier to stay on top of creating content and staying on top of these systems that you have than it is to set up these systems. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. So whew, hope you guys have enjoyed this content. We always try to come with pieces that are educational on the fitness culture side of things. We also have that YouTube channel as well, but also then showing the personal side of things, showing that lifestyle side and, and having fun with it. That's what I always aim to do with this channel. So appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you next time for the wedding vlog.